short hill, short hill measurement, short hill measurement goes around the leg here. Is thirty three and a half, thirty three and a half, thirty three and a half centimeter short hill. Okay, long hill goes to this bone. So, this is the long hill measurement is 36 36 centimeter long hill okay we'll need to find this point on the last this is our long hill d2025 25 and we mark it right here 25 on both sides 25 okay now we'll find measurement ball of the foot and these two bones and it is 26 26 goes right here 26 26 and let's find the shortest distance which is also 25 can say 24 and a half 24 and a half goes here 24 and a half okay. 20, 24 and a half okay. now measure from the bottom to the bottom of this bone and it gonna be five five centimeters so five centimeters on this side and Centimeters. Four centimeter on this side. Be up to here, higher, like that. My God, it's what thirteen inches. That's a lot. Okay. Because we do it in centimeters, and we'll say thirty, thirty-three centimeters. Okay, 33, high, 33 centimeter, and a diameter at this point is 14 and a half, 14 and a half diameter, and that's it for this leg, short little measurement is 33 33 short heel 33 long heel will go to this point Measure long heel up to here and it is 36 and a half 36 and a half 36 and a half long here. Now 
the mirror around the leg at long heel point, which is here. And it's 24. 24 in the market right here. 24 and also on the other side. 24. And now we measure ball of the foot, which is right. No, 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 no. Okay, here. Yes. And 26. 26. 26. And then we measure right here the shortest diameter is 23 and a half which is right here 23 and a half okay. and to the bottom of that bone from the ground and this side is uh, four and a half, uh, five let's say five five and on this side is So we go 33 centimeters up. Thirty-three centimeters up. And right here we go around thirty-eight thirty-eight centimeters diameter at thirty-three centimeter. Step one and pattern making its uh, tape in the last. The idea is to make two-dimensional model of the three-dimensional object. And uh, for that we'll start with a uh, painter's tape uh, and uh, taping the last from the bottom. Okay, we make sure that the lines are straight but I'm trying to at the back we go just a bit over the center line because we'll work on each side of the last at a time. I will fast forward to make that process a little bit faster. Also at the front we don't have to cover the other side, only up to the center line. And uh, if you see wrinkles, take that line, unglue it and glue again. Next step uh, we are getting ready to flatten 
the 3D model into 2D surface. So we are taking very accurate, we are taking uh, our tape from the last. We are trying not to pull it too hard. Okay, and now it's very important to flatten it properly. So what do we do? We are using two points at the front and at the back as two nails. And we are trying to nail it down. Here. So we let it sit in there. So this point and that point nailed. We go next, next, and more in the middle. And then the center line flattens. So when center line locked, we are going into all other directions. Okay, and then making cuts. Once we have a 2D model of one side of the last, we tape the second side and flatten it as well. So now we have uh, two forms, two 2D models of the last from outside of the last and inside of the last and uh, we'll start with the outside one to trace it we did trace outside form we take the inside form turn it uh, upside down and place it on top so it's Seat would match toe front part of the toe would uh, touch the line and the curve these two curves would meet in the middle so I meet the curve in the middle I touch this point and I touch that point. Again we place the inside form on top so they would meet in the middle of the back at the bottom here and at the top front. So one, two and three points. 
and pencil it. Okay. So our main form, we're gonna use the bottom line external and then this will make our mean form for that last. So <clears throat> this and that and that is our mean form. Now I'm cutting it out. We taped the last, made its inside and outside forms and used them to create the mean form. Now we will place major points on the mean form. To create the pattern we will use a modern pattern cutting and design by H.J. Patrick. And we'll start on page 5 of the book where Patrick speaks about uh, SLL which is abbreviation for standard last length. It is 10 inches for size 5, with 1 third inch between sizes. Very important here to understand that those are English sizes. When your last is made somewhere else and has different measurement system, you will have to convert and uh, we'll talk about that later. One of the last pages of the same book speaks about conversion from English to French sizes. So for example, for English size 5, it corresponds to French 38, which is 10 inches long, with one third inch between sizes for English system. We'll use Brooks method described by Patrick to calculate measure points of the pattern. We are starting with point S and place it at the bottom back of the mean form, right here. This is point S. Then we'll calculate counterpoint marked as CP, which is located at one fifth of a SLL from S. For that last, I already calculated my SLL. It is 24.5 cm, so CP is located 4.9 cm and measure it from point S at the back. And this will mark my CP or counterpoint. Uh, next important point is the joint, we'll mark it as J, and it is located 3 quarters SLL from CP, which is 18.4 cm here. Point J is located somewhere in this area, and uh, we'll take 3 quarters of SLL, which is 18.4 cm, and mark it on the mean form. In step point I is located one quarter of SLL from point J, and in this case it's 6.1, and measure it from point J up here on the border of the mean form. So that will be our point I.
next important point is the contact point contact with the ground will mark it as X and it is located at 76 degrees from the JCP line we can use either protractor to mark it from J C P line down at 76 degrees or I already have a template to make it simpler so I can use 76 degree template to mark point X at the bottom of mean form Now we have our mean form with the major points marked on it. Point X for the contact, J for the joint, I for instep, counterpoint, and seat. So let's review it again. Uh, as per Patrick, SLL is equal to 10 inches for English size 5 with one third inch between sizes. For that specific last SLL is equal to 24.5 cm. Seat, which is marked as letter S, is at the bottom back corner of the main form. We place it here. A counterpoint CP is one fifth SLL from point S, which is 4.9 cm from point S to CP. Point J for joint is three quarters SLL from CP. J is three quarters SLL from CP. Point I for instep is one quarter SLL from J. Point I is one quarter SLL from J. And contact point X is at 76, 76 degrees from line JCP. JCP to JX is 76 degrees. And now we have mean form with points J, I, CP, S and X mark on it. Now we'll trace it into a larger piece of paper. The heel height in this case is 38 millimeters. So now I'm marking 38 millimeters at the line that which is perpendicular to the horizontal line. Uh, 38 millimeters is here. Uh, that will be point S of my mean form. So I place point S here and touch point X on the horizontal line. So point X is on my horizontal line and point S is on my vertical line at 38 millimeters, which is my heel. I'm tracing the mean form and marking the points with an awl. And uh, connecting the points. Now I will draw a line parallel to XS through point I. Point P is located on a line parallel to XS at a distance of one half of IS. This is point P. Uh, let's mark point B at the bottom of the hill. And now we have line BX, which is our ground, and drawing line perpendicular to BX through point P. 
So we go down from the point P to the bottom of the last and measure boot height. In this case it's uh, 13 inches. So 13 inches we find point T. T is the top of the boot. At point T we'll draw perpendicular to line TP. We'll take measured calf perimeter and divide it by 4. In this case the calf is 39 centimeters so each quarter is 9.75 centimeters so I have 9.75 here and 9.75 there and that makes points D and D1. To get the front line we'll measure about 6 millimeters from point I toward P and uh, connect it to D, to point D. Next line should be parallel to XB and going through point P. So I would use two triangles. And that will be my point H. And point H1 is located on line HP, which is parallel to XB. And uh, H to H1 is 1.9 centimeters shorter than IS. Another parallel line will go uh, 4.1 centimeters, 4.1 centimeters above line HH1. To find the location of point A1, we'll take IS minus 6 mm from H, and that will make our path line. A line that connects points D1, A1, and H1 makes the uh, back side of the boot shaft. And that basically finishes our drawing for English riding boot as per Brooks method. However, for cowboy boots, that drawing has to be adjusted. Uh, first, we will add hard counter, starting at CP. I will add one and a half centimeters lasting allowance. We'll also straighten front part of the last, starting from point J. And uh, we'll add a curve between points I and H. If we measure distance at point P to the back and to the front of our boot, you can see that front part and back part are not symmetric. It is possible to make boot like that. Uh, however, that means that the uh, central seam is slightly moved backward in this area. And because of that, we will have hard time of uh, sewing front and back parts of the shaft together. It's preferable to make them more symmetric. Two last lines would be top and bottom of the shaft. So at the top, you can keep it straight. You can make a deep scallop starting from point T down, or you can start from point D and go up. At the bottom of the shaft, we are starting at point A or lower than point A, drawing the uh, seam connection between shaft and bump. It will continue on line CPJ and at the back 
uh, will be connection between shaft and uh, counter, countertop. Now, as a designer, you can do whatever you want in this area and that area. However, there is one important point, line IS. So line IS has to cross your seam approximately in this area. You will see later why it's important, but that's the point that has to be considered. So your seam between shaft and vamp has to cross line IS. You cannot keep it higher. This photo shows the complete drawing of a cowboy boot. In the next video, I will use this drawing to make templates for the front and back halves of the shaft, counter and vamp. In previous video we finished this boot drawing. I added a seam allowance 6mm for the side seam, 12mm for connection between shaft and vamp and shaft and counter and added 15mm lasting allowance at the bottom. Now I will use all to transfer major points of the drawing down to the pattern paper to create rounder patterns. From the drawing I transferred rounder patterns to pattern paper. Uh, this is the front shaft, back shaft, wamp and counter. And now I will cut them out. We just cut first set of patterns for front and back shaft, wamp and counter and getting ready to make uh, final patterns. To make the final pattern of back shaft, we'll take a pattern paper, fold it in half and place the initial pattern with its back side to the fold and trace it. Then we do the same for the front shaft template, folding piece of paper, placing its uh, front to the fold and uh, tracing around and cutting it out. We use this drawing to create first set of patterns for front, back, shaft and uh, counter and uh, we, then we use them to create final templates for front shaft, back shaft and counter. This is the rounder pattern of the vamp. To produce the front caster pattern from the rounder pattern, first place DH line to the folded edge of paper and mark round to P1. And P1 is the intersection of uh, line IS with the edge of the rounder pattern. Then turn around P1 until point J touches the fold, right here. And uh, trace to point X. After that, turn around point P2, which is in the middle between J and X, until front touch the fold. and trace the rest. Our final set of patterns includes patterns for counter, vamp, front and back shaft. And as the next step we are ready to mark and uh, cut leather. Hey, just before you go, if you want more relaxing stuff, you might know that I wrote a book seven habits of calm and happy people and now i even made an audiobook version it's the best habits that work for me for being more calm more at peace and i think you're gonna like it too so you can find it for free as a gift at findcalm.com book findcalm.com book check it out